In this video I'm going to focus on the other side of the chip and this area here with this transistor and this voltage divider here. If you have this particular board I would strongly recommend fixing the missing ground link which is this bodge wire here. A useful and it would seem often unused feature of the HX711 is its ability to provide a stable excitation voltage of your choosing with the use of an external transistor. Now the pins we're going to look at today that are used for this is the first five and the first one V supply which in this case on the board I'm using and in most cases is connected across to VCC basically um, they call it DVDD but that goes to VCC so that will be your 5 volts or whatever you power the board with. Second pin is called base because that goes to the base of the transistor. The third is the analog voltage, excitation voltage, which is going to go to there. That is called AVDD. The fourth pin is voltage feedback. Fifth, which we've looked at in a previous video, is the analog ground. Now it's important to make sure that analog ground is connected to your ground coming in from the microcontroller. The transistor is connected like so. Base connected to base pin and then this is going to go to analog voltage which is otherwise known as E+. Now from the analog ground which goes to E- we're going to have a potential divider across here and the middle of that goes to the voltage feedback pin. The resistor above uh, the feedback is known as R1 and below it to ground is known as R2. Now these are normally provided on the board as R1 equal to 20k and R2 8.2k. Now you can calculate the expected voltage here from the resistances used with the equation that is provided in the data sheet which I must uh, point out is actually incorrect. This was pointed out to me when I did some research on the internet so it's not me who's discovered this but the corrected formula is um, E plus or equal the voltage uh, feedback here which is also known as VBG which refers to this pin here which seems to have the same voltage as the feedback. That voltage there is equal to 1.25 volts times R1 plus R2 divided by, now this is the important difference from the data sheet this is in fact supposed to be R2. And now on to the point of this video, which is to say that um, if you want to make use of this transistor, which I would recommend, you will need to make sure that this excitation voltage here is set using this potential divider to at least 0.1 of a volt lower than whatever voltage you're going to put in on VCC. Now the reason for using this is because a lot of the modern boards have more efficient regulators but they actually have quite a bit of ripple um, and so if you want to minimize the amount of noise you get from the output of this then using this would actually be quite a good idea and of course you can also use this to lower the excitation voltage to save energy as well. What I've discovered while messing around is that the board demonstrated in this video earlier on will actually work um, with this transistor but only if this is at 5 volts. Now the reason for that is that because the board is supplied with a missing ground this analog ground over here seems to sit at around 0.7 of a volt which means that this excitation voltage wants to be at around 4.9 so in that scenario this actually works but as soon as this drops lower than 5 volts 
and on USB I've been getting about 4.7 then this transistor becomes completely useless and totally jammed on and what you get out here is around 4.7 volts now uh, with the um, ground in place as it should be this drops to zero obviously because it's connected and what I found was that this then becomes around 4.1 volts so in that scenario obviously this then works um, fine but of course um, if you want to put a lower voltage a much lower voltage in here then you will obviously need to make sure that this excitation voltage is dropped much lower um, a common one I found online was if you want to put 3.3 .3 volts in here very common on more uh, modern boards is to change this to 10k and then I think that's supposed to give you around about 2.7 volts out here instead of the 4.1 so that's um, the conclusion of that um, and hope it's helpful and finally bonus tip it's good practice to ground any unused inputs so if you're using channel B for example you would ground channel A like so that's it for this video and thank you for watching